Hey guys, Knife Scholar here, here with another video. Today we're not going to be making a knife, we're going to be making something that will help us make stuff for knives in the future. This, as you might recognise, was my old leather slash old Kydex press type thing. And it didn't work great, it was just a hinge and you just put a lot of pressure on that. There are a few sponges that are now living in the bin. Yep. But today we're going to be making a new and improved one, and the general design I will show you in a minute, but should be fairly simple, not going to be too hard, you just need a few screws, a hinge, a drill would be handy, and you're going to need some kind of flat material that will make up the main body of your clamp kind of thing, that will be the bit that you will sit the clamp on, which will be used to apply the pressure. So. Let's get right into doing it. So the first thing to do is going to be to mark how long uh, the sheet material you're going to need. I'm just using some NDF that was an off cut from an old project many moons ago we did. And I've also got some high density foam here. It's actually memory foam, but uh, it is the same substance at the end of the day. And it's not that memory, you know, it comes back. And uh, the general thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna mark a little line here and I've got two pieces here, roughly the same size. I just cut them out roughly with a knife. And that will be how long the press is going to be because that's the maximum I can, it's the maximum uh, coverage I'm actually gonna get with this. If I made it any longer, it wouldn't actually be doing anything. So we're gonna make it this long. I think that's a good idea. And it's also roughly how long a knife I'm gonna make. Say if I was going to use that I've got plenty of clearance if I want to take it back even further I mean the longest knife I've ever made was that Bowie knife and it's the blade is about that long I'd say so we've still got a lot of clearance if we need to make any bigger knives in the future so let's go straight ahead and start cutting so I've squared off this just with a combination square wherever it's got to yep just use that and a pencil and then once I've cut it, I'm just going to translate it directly onto the next piece. Then we'll have two equal pieces that we can then start screwing together. Now I've got myself my piece, we can do some other stuff. Then we can get to the main screwing in of such and yep, should be a reasonably easy job of it. I've got my two reasonably equal bits of wood, or wood, melamine, whatever you want to call it. And, yep, now we're ready to just clean up the edges so they're not really, really sharp and debris and hard to drill into and things. And, yep, then we can work out some spacings for the hinges so that it doesn't close at a funny angle. And, yep, then we're pretty much done with the project. So, let's go ahead and debur some edges. I need to mention that you just need a little bit of a stop. This will act as almost a spacer between, because if I get these, and I try to cram them in without this, there, there'd be a big problem really, because I wouldn't have any kind of spacing between it, there'd be uneven forming, it wouldn't form as well near the back, it'd be start to crush the wood, it just wouldn't be as good. So I'm just gonna take some screws that I found out of my, if you like organizing, just look away, because this is just my box of things. So, I had a look in that, and I found a few screws, just going to chuck those in there, just keep that there. Then we can apply our hinge, and then we are pretty much done. We can add the hinge, add the foam, then we can see how it works. So, let's do it. After doing everything I need to do, I've got myself this neat little system here. I've got two hinges that'll open up. I can grab one of those, have that there. Have the other one there, sort of. And when they compress, they should compress pretty evenly, which is good. They haven't compressed super evenly because, well, I've set them up a little bit funny. but. The general idea is here, this is the general premise, it's probably not the most efficient, probably not the best press you've ever seen ever, but it'll do the trick, so fair enough, and this is all I'm really trying to do here, maybe I can 
be a little bit cheeky. No, no I can't. Uh, yeah, so this is generally it. I'm going to find some kind of way to secure these down, then we'll show off, see how it works, and all that other kind of stuff. So after a little bit of grinding, I managed to make this. This is just a simple little neck knife, nice wooden handle, linseed oil, scotch brighted. It's a nice, nice finish, actually. I really like the way it turned out. You can kind of see a reflection in it, which is nice. So we're going to be making a little sheath for this today, just because I needed to try this out and add literally no knives I wanted to. I mean, I had this which I made the other day, but because it's a power cord wrap handle, they don't like any kind of hot plastic at all. It's kind of a leather only zone for power cord, um, power cord wrapped handles. But because this one's wooden, we should be all right. And we can just, my dog's barking at me. Dog, what do you need? Dog doesn't know what he needs. So we're just going to get ourselves a bit of PVC tubing, if I can find any, and then we can begin the making processes for the PVC sheath. So I found myself a little bit of PVC tubing. I'm not entirely sure the diameter of it. I'll find out for the next clip. But uh, I've got it, and all I know is it fits. That fits in there, which is good. And I've got quite good retention spots on this knife if I just show you. I have this point here next to this little notch which I'm using as a sharpening notch. I could use that bit there or I could use this bit here or both but I am thinking that it's going to be too tight if I bring it up here so I'll probably leave the retention just to these areas here as I don't have any defined bevels that I could use or defined plunge lines that I could use for uh, high spot retention which is Kind of the other way of it. If you have a high spot, it will click into it like that, which is nice. But I'll be using uh, kind of more mechanical stuff where stuff actually gets in the way and is generally annoying. So we're going to be doing that. I'm going to get myself a hacksaw, decide how long this is going to be, cut it off. Then we can whip on the heat gun and then we can try out the sheath. Uh, sheath? <laughs> try out the press and see if it works so this should be a fun little thing to do so let's do it so i've got my little bit of tubing but before we hit it with the heat gun we are going to get some masking tape and just plop it on top of the blade either side i'm just going to remove the excess with a razor blade in a second I'm going to go for two, that seems about enough. This is just going to provide enough clearance so that the PVC does not rub. And it will ruin the finish and it will do a lot of bad stuff that I don't want. So applying this gives a better retention. I hate masking tape. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to do that on the other side, then we can move on to hitting it with the heat gun. Right, so sorry I couldn't film heat gun in it, I completely forgot where my phone was, and then I found it right at the end, after I clamped it all up. Oh, well done. But it was it was pretty stressful, to be honest, doing it with a heat gun, because you have to keep constantly move it around. And because I was only doing it on that, I mean, it was rolling around all over the place, it was, it was pretty naff, I, di I didn't get any good footage of it, and... Neither was I expecting to. So the idea is you just clamp it a lot till you can't clamp it anymore. Then you leave it for about 15 minutes. You can leave it for 10, but the plastic's still quite warm. So you're kind of hedging your bets. But I'd recommend leaving it for about 15. So I, I finished my tea. So I, I might go get some more of that. Yeah, let's go do that now then. So, I'll see you in a bit. Go away, Bumblebee. Right, so, I'll see you in 15 minutes. Right, so, this is the finished product. I know I've skipped a little bit, but I've already done a few videos on making PVC stuff and leather stuff. It's basically all the same. I've drilled a few holes for webbing that will eventually go through. I didn't drill any, any on the other side, because it's kind of a side storage knife like that, that you pull out like that. And then you can push it back in, and then pull it out like that. 
I've also added a few notches. These are just for kind of the feel. This is a thumb one, so you can just push it off, push the sheath off with your thumb here. And this is more for grip than anything, just so it feels a little more ergonomic and flows with the knife slightly. Just put a few rivets in there just to keep it shut and just not rely on the overall tension because I have taken bits off, so the tension will go ever so slightly. It, it doesn't shake, which is good. It moves around a touch, but that's only if you really force it, and I, I know it's not coming off, so that's good. This is it's a pretty good uh, press. Yes, not bad. It, it works, so that's good, and anyway, I guess we can finish the video there, and hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to do, and I'll see you all in the next video, I guess.